From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. It's Friday and you're not. That's kind of the way he talks. You listen to radio and you get these people burned into your brain. Pompous, arrogant, pretentious motherfuckers. You You can tell him I said that if you want to. I can teach him how to use his microphone better. And he needs to learn how. Anyway, this is all this time wasting is in lieu of comments from the haters. We don't have any today due to an oversight by one of our staff members. Blatant oversight by one of our staff members is depriving you, our faithful listeners, faithful watchers of the entertainment that you derive every time we do Come in, Come in sir, 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 sir. From, from the, the, the heat heaters. heaters. And uh, what, it was all a bunch of stuff last, what was it last time? Everybody was bitching about what? Uh, I think it was just about you being fat and pink last time. Could Two be. times ago it was about Chase and his press. What do you know about the virus? What do I know about the virus? The virus. What about what are you a virus, Ripito? How do you know anything about viruses? You're not a virus. Something to that effect. No, no, it was something else. What did we talk about the past couple of times? That's we talked about. I think that's uh, what the last comment from the haters was. We talked about uh, who was the guest we had. Uh, Israel. Israel, and I don't think there was any nasty comments about Israel. Uh, you know, I don't think there was any comments about how what a dumbass I am and what a dumbass Israel is. And then we talked about, uh, oh, we talked about alcohol. That's what it was. It was the yeah. alcohol thing. And uh, it was a bunch of comments about what a fat piece of shit I am. And Somebody on you know, here is claiming that your reverb is post-production. What? Yeah. Where did they get that idea? Saurabh Rajay is saying Rip's reverb is post-production. Where did they get that moron. fucked up idea? He just didn't hear it right. All right. Let's do it again. No, no, no. You don't want to do it again? Fuck him. <clears throat> See, I could demonstrate it right now. But, I mean, if you're going to make a shitty comment like that, hey, go get fucked. <laughs> go listen to Rogan. Hey, go ahead. Go hey, ahead. he's in Texas now. Rip, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. You, you want to do go it. ahead and do yeah. it? Comment, Comment sir, 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 sir. from, from man, man, man. the heat here. See? See? <laughs> okay, do it idiots. again. Ready? Ready? Just to show you one more time. All right. Comment, Comment sir, 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 from, from man, man, man. the bottom, bottom point, point zero, 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 0.003%. 0.003%. So there you go, Sarab. So, hey, how about that? Suck it, boy. <laughs> You've got five adoring fans on hold. Hey, if you if you get any good comments. While we're doing them, this, yeah, we could them. forward those and we could comment from yeah. the haters. I don't know. They're ready when you are, Rip. Ready for a phone call? Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's ask the audience. Oh, Sarab says it was on mute. WTF. Hey, I I got no time for this yeah. guy. We did it three times. Uh, three times. Fuck it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we could. While we got all these people on on the phone here, we could ask him and just take a poll. Should we fire Bree? Should we fire Bree? Should we fire question. Bree for omitting comments from the haters? Be today's poll question. Oh, that's yummy coffee. Who made that? No. Oh, like that's a trend? <laughs> you accept? Do you expect that to be? Jordan says send Brie to my house. 
It's that's going to happen quite a bit, I'm afraid. All right. Well, we're you may have guessed we're taking your calls today here on Q and A. Uh, maybe we ought to come up with a formal name for this format. Q and A radio. Um, oh, we'll work on that. Yeah. We'll send it to the research department. See what they come up with. The art department. Yeah. Let the art department the come R&D, up with. R and D part department. Yeah. yeah. We'll get it. We'll get something yeah. together. Next time we do one of these, we'll have a name for it. Right now, it's just Q and A. Your harebrained ass questions that come in on. Uh, how do they get a hold of us? Eight four seven six two seven four two four six. Whose phone number is that? That's our phone number. Our phone number. Only during this. On, that's the number that's been assigned to us for this particular product. That's right. That we're doing. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. I'll have to put that in my directory on my iPhone. You know, did your iPhone download that update? Where yeah. Your fingerprints are now public domain and shit from. Yeah. You you realize that'll happen. Yeah. And you You'll touch the screen. They're going to have this thing figured out so that you touch the screen, and they'll have your fingerprints before it's over with. Oh, we already you, gave you, them our fingerprints and our think face. think about it. I remember when we had an iPhone 7? You, you, did, you didn't have the thumbprint no. to unlock it? No. I didn't, I didn't use that. Oh. I did. Because I'm didn't smarter either. than that. So. I got face ID on all my I shit. I don't have too. face ID. I don't have fingerprint ID. I don't have shit. I just turn the phone. That means on. they don't know anything Any- about you, Rip. No, not yeah. a damn thing. No, I know because you have avoided. Those, I've, yeah, I've I've those successfully avoided. Traps. They, they, they do, however, uh, know that if you look under the health thing, data access, Rip's fight, and it and you say walking and running distance. <laughs> Did you realize that on What's September the fifteenth at eleven thirty nine, I, I walked twenty seven point nine feet. Damn. The only thing omitted is where. No, it's in there. No, it's in there. It's in there. No, you're there. absolutely. You just don't right. have access to that. Part. This is amazing. Yeah. This is amazing. It, it's we're going to get to the point where this fucking thing has to stay on the desk. Yeah. You know that's. All you're going to be able to do, just leave it on your desk. And, uh, which, you know, defeats the purpose of the device right. itself. But that's what they're forcing us into doing, you know. <laughs> okay. You ready? We got six people waiting. Ready for you. All right. Take the, uh, take the, 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 the most, most innocuous topic, topic first. All right. Just let me ramp up into okay once you guys will notice my shirt here right until this gym you guys kick some ass up there for us all right excellent job you're doing we love you all right okay callers when you get on uh put your speakers on mute so turn your speakers down when you get on all right let's take it here we go that one little, one little ringy dingy there. Hey, you can hear me telling this guy to put his speakers on mute. All right, tell us your name and uh, your question again. My name is Jake Hunley. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. And uh, my question was, uh, I'll go ahead and say my lifts. Uh, squats, 450. Deadlifts, 490. Uh, my bench is around 300. And my press is around 200. Mm, what's your height and your body weight? Uh, one ninety-five at six foot. Six foot, one ninety-five. How old are you? Twenty-one years old. Well, those are pretty good numbers, uh, especially at that body weight. Uh, you you know I'm going to tell you that you need to be two forty-two as fast as you can get there, right? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, at two forty two you'll you'll squat and pull in the sevens, bench in the mid fours, press three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I just was wondering because I just my bench just feels like it's dog shit. Three hundred pound bench on a 
on a 450 squ 490 squat that's not bad no i think you're how long you been doing this uh correctly probably about a year and a half i think you're doing fine i think your body weight's holding you back that's the primary bottleneck here six foot 190 is not big you're pretty strong for not being very big uh, that's the whole, that's the, your levers aren't going to work at six foot weighing 190. You know, if you're concerned about your numbers, you've got to get your body weight up. And I've said this before, I'm five, eight, the worst advice I ever got when I was competing was to stay at 220 at five, eight. It's the worst advice I ever got. You could carry 275. I just... <clears throat> you can carry 275 i just didn't want to freak you out <laughs> you need to be really you need to be thinking about 250 as fast as you can get there and uh, uh that's where your that's where your levers are going to work best what was your programming question what was yeah what was the programming my programming question was uh i just feel like with where my press is my bench should be higher than than what it is i don't think so no i don't think so at all i think you've got a pretty good ratio and i think that uh as your body weight goes up your bench you'll be shocked at how much your bench goes up bench is real sensitive to body weight a bench and press are not particularly dependent on each other and both of them are sensitive to body weight you know, if, if you're doing 200 at 190, you're already bench pressing, you're already pressing over body weight at a very low body weight. And uh, uh, your whole problem here, uh, your whole problem is body weight. Go on up. Okay. Thanks for calling. Hello. 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 Hey, Rip. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I watch your podcast every week. Cool. Um, we appreciate I, loyalty. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm a 21 year old college baseball player here in Texas. Right. I uh, six feet tall, 210 pounds, squat 510, deadlift 550, bench 245 because uh, bench is apparently dangerous for baseball players. Oh yeah, it'll kill you. Uh, It'll kill you. I mean, if you were to drop that bar with 245 on your face, you couldn't play baseball again. Oh, and not to you mention know. the permanent elasticity of my shoulder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It would, it would uh, I don't know what it would do. I don't, what catastrophic effects a, a big bench would have on the shoulder uh, of, a, of a baseball player. Anyway, uh, uh, my question uh, refers to the squat. Um, all right. I have been low bar squatting for about a year and a half. I recently transferred to a new college with an apparent genius for a strength coach that tells me low bar squat uh, puts an unnecessary bearing of weight on my wrists and elbows, even though that is far from the case. He wants me to convert to high bar squatting. My question is, <laughs> how much strength or benefit am I giving up from switching to high bar squat to appease my apparently genius coach. Well, uh, whatever the weight on the bar is, is what force production you're giving up because force production is measured by the number of pounds on the bar. Now, most people are going to high bar 80% of their low bar and most people will front squat 70% of their low bar. So that's the force production you're giving up. And uh, one, of the, one of the shitty things about being a college athlete in 2020 is that most of you guys uh, know more about this shit than your genius strength and, strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, yeah, we sent... Uh, chase down to what little shitty school did he go to uh, was it howard Payne? howard Payne, harden simmons one of these you know <laughs> church schools here in junior colleges here in texas and he went down there and uh 
Uh, they gave him some little bullshit scholarship for a semester, and he walks in the he walks in the weight room with a with a five hundred pound squat. As an eighteen year old kid, he walks in. He's you know one hundred and fifty two hundred pounds stronger than anybody else on the team, and knows more about this than any of the coaching staff. And uh, they immediately began changing his program up because. Obviously, what he'd been doing previous to that wasn't working well. <laughs> so, just a, it's just a frustrating situation that you're going to have to figure out a way to deal with. Uh, one of the ways you might want to deal with it is just go to the fucking gym when you're under the watchful eye of this moron and sandbag your uh, high bar squats. You know, do 315 or something. You know, try your best to stay out of your knees and then find someplace, someplace else to actually train. See, this allows him to think that he's doing a great job by keeping you real strong and it allows you to stay strong. That's what Chase was doing. You, he was going you just got to do it on the down low. Yeah, he was going in the, in the school gym, like the student gym. The, just, yeah, the intramural just, gym. Just pretending during the workouts. He uh, just sandbagged during the workouts. If I could <clears> offer a suggestion, just uh, – Tell him okay and then just put the bar low. He might not even notice the difference. That's a good point. I mean, no, I mean, no more than these people know about this, you know. Yeah. Don't they, argue with them. Just be like, all right, and then just slide the bar down an inch. He might not even notice. Yeah. Just take it out of the rack in the high bar position. Adjust it down and squat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do that. I don't know. I think I'd probably go in there. And, and well, we're going to follow up now. Uh, starting strength Austin is about 25 minutes from our campus, so maybe I can get a college discount if I say rip center. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. And that's too far to drive anyway. So, if you, uh, what are you in school for? Uh, what am I in school for? Business. You could go over and uh, start an apprenticeship at Starting Strength Austin. Could do that. That might be worth the drive if you're actually looking at it from a uh, education standpoint. Uh, they're always looking for good help. Uh, sane people being a scarce commodity in Austin these days. Yep. Yeah. You, know, you ain't got to tell me that. Yeah, I know. You know better than I do. <clears throat> All right, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Now, is. Uh, I've got real shitty, scratchy, shorted out audio in my headphones here. That's because I got you turned all the way up. <clears throat> but that's not going on the recording, no. right? No. You're sounds, hearing the. It sounds great on you know, it would solve this if you agreed to wear these headphones. They sound fantastic. Yeah. But then you'd look like Joe Rogan. I don't want to look like Joe Rogan. At <laughs> it, 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 whatever the cost. All right, well, enjoy your scratchy audio then. I, it doesn't bother me that much. My primary concern, <laughs> let me, let me no, see if I can fine. explain that to you. I will let you know. If I wanted to know if great. the audio recording was as bad as what's going on in here, okay. even though I can't the, understand it. The crack okay. production staff would do something about it if there was a problem. Well, I don't know. The crack production staff didn't have the comments from the haters that's, on the table That's not when the they were supposed staff. to. That's not the technical production staff. That's ah, okay. Free. That's the production assistant. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that the soon to <laughs> fucking be replaced, honey. Everybody said no. <laughs> yeah, let's ask the next guy if we should fire Bree. All right. <laughs> Hello. Talk, Talk to me. Hey, hey Reef. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine too. It's uh, Zef from uh, Israel. From where? Israel. Israel, all right. Rip. Yeah, um, I wanted to thank you for doing the squat camp in Tel Aviv. Well, I didn't actually do the squat camp in Tel Aviv, but... Or fix my squat in a couple of minutes. Good. <laughs> like, uh, it was really good. And uh, my question is, are you going to do more camps in Israel? Like, uh, maybe David camp? Was my, my form was really, really bad. Well, uh, I, w I would imagine if the first one went off, all right, we'd probably continue to probably continue to offer that product over there. Uh, you know, as long as politics and safety permit, we'll, uh, we'll 
still be doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> I would imagine. Who all did the camping? Zohar. What you can do, uh, <clears throat> Zev, is email Zohar and tell him you want a deadlift camp. That'd be the thing to do. Yeah, if he uh, he'll be the one running it. Yeah, no, I I I did no, I didn't I didn't email him. Uh, I'm I'm asked if it's uh, if there's a possibility in future there will be more we, camp. We course. we won't have any problem with it, but he's running it, so you got to ask him. Yeah, he's the one that does the camp, so he's going to be the one that sets it up. So absolutely, we will do camps in Israel, uh, but Zohar is going to be the point man there. So talk right. to him, and he will set it up. All right. So this is let me, let me explain this. This is this is different from. When we do a seminar, we set the seminar up. Most of these are done in Wichita Falls. We schedule those. We decide on the date. We put the seminar on. The camps are completely dependent upon the person running the camp. Essentially, that's their date, not ours. So we will not assign the date. We would okay what he wants to do. And if there's no conflicts with anything else going on, then we'll okay the camp. And that, that'll, there, there will never be a conflict in Israel with anything we're going to schedule in the States. So anything he wants to do, he can do. But he's going to have to know that somebody's going to sign up for the damn thing when he does. So get a hold of him and tell him you want the camp. Yep. Okay. Thanks for the call. Six more people. Let's talk to another one. Let's talk to somebody else. Why don't we? we for, you forgot to ask if we should fire Bree. So do that. All right. Time. That'd be the first thing we talk to. Uh, this is Rip. Hey, Rip. This is Steve from New Jersey. How you doing? Fine, Steve. You think we ought to fire Bree or not? Uh, I'll say no. Give her another chance. <laughs> Maybe a, a verbal warning. Well, a verbal warning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, she's already had her verbal warning. Uh. I, you know, uh, I, I'm going to tell you this, though, Steve. One more fuck-up. That's it. One more. That's all it takes. That's all it's going to take. Rip, are you the HR She'll department? be going down the road with a carrot in her ass, I'm telling you. <laughs> out, of the, out of here, all right? Are you the HR department or is he the HR department? We are the HR both department. Both of you? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> You're both on notice. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, you too. You too, you too I, motherfucker. What did I do? <laughs> you let her fuck this up. <clears throat> you walked in here today. There's no goddamn comments from the haters on the desk. And what did you say? Bree, Nothing. I'm the manager. Not now. one thing did you say. Sorry you had to listen to that, Steve. All right, Steve. So how can we help you today? No, no problem. I want to say thank you. I called you last time, and you guys recommended a seminar and I'm doing that on Saturday in Connecticut at a Nino Strength. And That's not a I seminar. Started, uh, 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 the, um, the camp. You're doing the camp. You're doing a camp. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So going, going to the camp, uh, excited about it. Also started working with an online coach. That's been working well, too. Um, just a funny note, I know earlier on the calls, you mentioned uh, dropping a barbell on your face in the past. I had a um, 5x5, 365, third set, had it come down on my face, got stuck, no pins, crawled out from under it. Not that bad. I was able to finish the workout <laughs> then drove myself to the local um, clinic, 24-hour uh, clinic, and got my stitches. You didn't break anything when you dropped a bar on your face? Well, I shouldn't say drop. It was still in my hands. I would say I got stuck underneath it. You got stuck yeah, underneath it on your face. On my face. Side of my face. Needed five you, stitches under my lip. Jesus. You've got, like, real heavy brow ridges and shit, don't you? <laughs> like a Neanderthal <laughs> person. Like that. I was, I was going to the CVS and put some medical glue on it, but my wife needed to go get it. Well, that's a pretty scar. You yeah, uh, it doesn't leave a mark. Well, the beard grows there anyway, so. It's just, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're fine then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, on a less serious question, but something that I would find interesting, on your opinion, do you have a favorite superhero movie? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I think the best superhero movie that's been made to date, uh, and I think most everybody would agree with this, is Winter Soldier. 
Yeah, I think that's the best one they've done. That was it's gotten so silly recently that, you know, I don't want to you know, I don't want to watch a Marvel superhero movie and be taught about Black Lives Matter and shit. I'm just not interested in that. I want to watch a Marvel superhero movie and I think Winter Soldier is one of the better movies that's ever been filmed. I mean, the thing's flawless. It's just absolutely flawless. That's that's by far the the best one I've seen. James you know. Bond style political drama. Yeah. Right. And it's and in you know, it goes right along with that. The James Bond movies are among the the modern ones are among the the best movies that have ever been filmed. I think Skyfall is a top five movie that's ever been filmed. It's just there's not a flaw in it. It's a fabulous film. And uh Everything, you know, it's one of these things you can watch 15 times because there's not any, there's not anything in it that constitutes a mistake that grates on your ass when you have to watch it and are forced to ignore it. It's just everything about it is damn near perfect. And, uh, who was the villain in Skyfall? Was that Javier Bardem? Yeah. Yeah. Bardem was the villain in Skyfall and, uh, God, he's a good, bad guy. My he God, sure is. He is a good actor. he's. He's a great actor, no but he makes a, he makes, yeah, the no country for old men. What a, what a psychotic motherfucker. The guy plays a psycho. I mean, uh, you know, his deviated septum and everything is just perfect for a bad guy. He's, uh, he's, uh, that, that was just a great film. It really was. And, uh, it's, uh. So much to recommend it. If you, if you people that haven't uh, haven't seen Skyfall, I really think you need to start with Casino Royale. And uh, uh, Quantum of Solace was the second one, and it was the worst of the four. Uh, for some bizarre reason, when they shot that, they let the director do his shaky cam masturbation thing. And you you have to fast forward through the chase scenes because they're so badly filmed. They uh, probably let the production assistant do it. You think? Who decide? Who made <laughs> the, the decision about Brie. that? Because that's they're like here, Bree. Oh, oh, is is that like a Bree yeah. thing? Could, Could be. You shoot this. Could shoot very this well be. Quick, Could very well have been something like that. What if they fired the guy? You think? Probably yeah, did a verbal would. warning. Verbal warning. <laughs> a verbal Can't have this. <laughs> The, the next one we're doing, Skyfall, we're shooting this. Don't let this happen again. <laughs> and then uh, the the fourth one was uh, quant- was uh, 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 Skyfall and Spectre. Uh, Spectre, yeah. Spectre. 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 Yeah. It's all right, yeah, but uh, uh, just Skyfall be hard to the new one looks hard to top. The the new, the, the new one. When did they decide the new one is going to come out? What two months away? I think so. It, it'll be safe to watch in two months. Well, everybody's looking forward to that. Uh, I, of course, will not go to the theater to see it uh, because I'm, you know, 64 and, you know, I'm in the I'm in the demographic that dies of the deadly COVID-19 pandemic. So I will have to wait till it comes out on on Blu-ray to see it. But uh, anyway, yeah, maybe they'll release it at the same time. Maybe they'll release it the day after the election. <laughs> and. If that would be a public service, it might prevent several fires from being started, <laughs> which you know is going to happen, you know. It's a, yeah. All right. Thanks for the call, Steve. Later, man. Thank you. Oh, just an FYI. Uh, oh. Rogan is moving to Texas. To He's already him. here. Just, just, hey, where, yeah. look, the guy, look, I know where he is, okay? <laughs> All right. He won't leave me alone. And he thinks, see, just so you guys know, he thinks that just because he's in Austin that now I'll come down and be on the show. He's mistaken. He's he's he's, he's mistaken. Yeah. He just moved from California to California. <laughs> <laughs> That's California what he did. East. It's a very lateral move, you know. California East ba- is where he's Actually, he, is where he, he downgraded th- because, because L.A. is not like the Bay Area, and Austin is the well, Bay Area. Austin's like the Bay Area. Austin is a festering tumor in the middle of texas throwing off metastasis every day some californian in austin says you know this is kind of like california 
and moves somewhere else and takes his contaminated bullshit with him. And, I, you know, it's just a matter of time for the whole state. It's just as fucked up. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be dead by then. <laughs> but, no, Rogan's, nah, fuck, not going to do it. Sorry, Joe. Look, you busy yourself with the Trump-Biden debate, all right? I'm staying in Wichita Falls. All right. Thanks for the call, Steve. All right. Now, uh, what else? How many calls we got? We got eight on hold. Eight on hold. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, I see no reason to stop. So, yeah, let's go ahead. Oh, seven. We lost one. Hello. Hey, guys. This is Yo. Eric from Cincinnati. Who's this? Hey, Rip, How are you? Eric from Cincinnati. This is two callers from Cincinnati in one day. Weird. Do you know the yeah, other guy from Cincinnati? Okay. Uh, no, and I, I thought I was going to look him up on Facebook, but I decided not to. And I was going to say Northern Kentucky, but because we're right across the river, but I thought, what the hell? Might as well be two Cincinnati's in a row. Might as well. Uh, I mean, after all, you guys. But you know, one thing good about that area is you've got that Gold Star Chili up there. That's so good. I, I would. I would strongly disagree. You can't call that. Chili. You don't like Gold Star Chili? That's that soupy shit they have? No. Well, it's kind of soupy, but it's got some cinnamon in it. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's a problem. pleasant cinnamon change of pace. It, ha- it has noodles in it. But you can order it without the noodles. I mean, they'll do what you and want to. Gold star, but then it's not Gold Star Chili. <laughs> no, the Gold Star Chili is the cinnamon part. <laughs> I guess. All right. Guess. So, guess anyway, what do you want? Skyline. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So, <laughs> so um... I'm not sure you obviously you've been around for a long time in the fitness industry, so I I was always wondering if you had any run ins with the, the late Arthur Jones, the creator of Nautilus, and if you did, what was your your take on him or maybe you have any thoughts on his practices? Well, I never met the guy, okay? I never met Arthur Jones. And uh I know people that know him, that knew him. Uh I've had several extended conversations with people that knew the guy and he was truly crazy as hell. Uh, he knew absolutely nothing about exercise, but there has never been a more effective marketing genius turned loose on this industry than Arthur Jones, uh, Arthur Jones. And I've said this several times, single handedly transformed the fitness industry into something that could be managed with minimum wage employees on the floor. You know, you, you buy his equipment, you teach some kid how to show another person how to do leg extensions and you take him to failure and then you go to the next machine and, uh, you do that over and over again. And all Arthur had to do was come up with an explanation for why that made sense. (laughs) And he would write, millions of words about how this made sense and uh i no, i don't know how much of that gib- gibberish has actually survived over the years but uh uh he published has a, a pretty big occult following so i don't know that he does i yeah. think most people don't remember the guy uh yeah i think a lot of the young, younger generation maybe not but they haven't ever heard his name still around yeah kim wood and being from the cincinnati area he's He's still got a pretty big because you know Hammer Strength is over here and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's his. Hammer Strength's his son runs that, I believe. And uh, uh, I, mean, I that, think they might have sold it, right? Could uh, probably. Oh, maybe you're you know, right. He he. At one time, he he came up with Hammer Strength, and he probably sold it to some global corporation. But uh, Arthur was in Florida for a long time. I mean, he had. Uh, he had a zoo down there, great big giant zoo with a bunch of exotic animals and really? lions and tigers and bears, oh my, and you know, giraffes and shit. And, and he was uh he was uh, uh really uh an iconoclast. And uh apparently a terribly interesting guy. I'd like to have met him. I think it would have been very entertaining to have a conversation with a guy. Uh and a and a genius marketer. Just an absolute genius. If you if you remove Arthur from any discussion of uh, sports physiology or exercise or anything like that, the guy was brilliant. 
He was a he was a business genius. You just have to understand that he's in a different business than we are, and always was. So, yeah. All right. Appreciate the call. Yep. See ya. All right. So, I am trying to decide whether or not I need to gain or lose weight. So I feel like I'm in an awkward in between position of between skinny fat and a little bit chubby. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that doesn't sound like an awkward in between to me. Uh, how long have you been training? Uh, not that long. I started a little bit before, you know, quarantine happened, and then my Air Force Base shut down the gym. So the last few weeks I've just been trying to recover my previous So you haven't been training? Not for too long, no. All right. What's your uh, height and weight? 5'11 and 205. You're, how tall are you? 5'11. 5'11, 205. Uh, how old are you? 37 inch waist. How old are you? 22. Uh, 23. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Early 20s. Uh, and what are your lifts right now? I don't know. Fairly low at the moment. Squat is 210, bench 170, press 110, deadlift 250. You don't need to do anything except the novice linear progression right now. Yep. You need to do the novice linear progression on probably 3,800 calories a day. Yep. And uh, don't give anything else another thought except getting your numbers up. That's the only thing you ought to be concerned about right now. And you can get it done at that body weight. I mean, oh, yeah. Even if it inches up a little bit, it's fine. But you you, yep. need, you need to get your squat to over 300. You need to get your squat 300. way way up. Uh, if your body weight goes up a little in the process, that's fine. You're still – you said you're 5'10", 5'11", and 215, right? 205. 205. 205. 5'11", 205 is underweight. Really, it's underweight. I don't care how much fluffs around your belly. That'll all change as you begin to train. Two years from now, you won't look like this. Whether you do anything specific about dropping body fat or not, your body fat will go down as your muscle mass goes up on 3,800 calories a day. But you have got to start worrying about your little bullshit 250 deadlift. All right? That's, that's got to go up. It's got to go up immediately. For a and guy his, his size and with those numbers, this is exactly the point where shit starts going wrong because they start worrying about, right. do I lose a few pounds and then try to get stronger again? Uh, do, I, do I go mad and then try to run my numbers up as, as quickly as possible? But, yeah, the, the focus should be on adding weight to the bar. Adding weight to the bar. You need 250, 300 grams of protein a day. Uh, 3,800 calories. Uh, if you're excessively concerned about your belly, don't drink the milk. But uh, your numbers right now are five pounds of workout type numbers. Mm -hmm. Just run them up. Yep. Okay? Thanks for the call. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah. Hey, Rip. This is uh, Simon from Chicago. Uh, si Simon you've from Chicago. You yourself to be. Yeah, you've professed yourself over the last several years and probably your whole life to be more of a libertarian-leaning, classic liberal individual. Right. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask a couple of questions. That reflecting on the last six months and all the hysteria over COVID, Black Lives Matter, the all of that that anyone could evaluate that and come to the conclusion that too much government was the problem as opposed to not enough government intervention in stopping this because corporations have enabled and shilled for this narrative the entire time and then one quick point i see often in texan circles a lot of you know dumping on people who move to texas but 
according to the exit polling in 2018, Cruz won by 15 points amongst uh, Texan transplants, while Beto won by three points amongst native-born Texans. All right. What's your question? <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear a question. My question is how you reconcile the position that the government is really the problem here when what's really happening is we're getting to the end stages of liberalism with companies running the show, and right. it's not good for society. <clears throat> all right, let me ask you a question. What action, I want you to name for me a single action that any government at any level has taken since February that made the slightest bit of logical sense. You said, you said one action from government that I would do? No. I said, I want you to name for me one single action taken by any government at any level since February that's made the slightest bit of logical sense. I would say shutting down travel into the country, and I, but, but I would say that you're proving my point, because I'm saying the government hasn't done anything in the last six months, and everything's going to shit. I mean, oh, the riots just, in the streets. Right, right, why do we have masks on? Because businesses are willing to enforce it. They'll refuse you service if you don't wear it. No, they don't. No, they that's do bullshit. Up here. That's yeah. bullshit. I go to businesses all the time without a mask. Wichita Falls and in Chicago. You can go into a business in Chicago, and believe me, I've tried it more, more than just about any, certainly anyone I know. Why? And I go in there without a mask. They will have a security guard who will yeah, threaten to call the police and will grab you and, if you don't wear the mask. And, and why are, who, who, who runs Chicago? Who runs the businesses in Chicago? You think the Chicago city government has something to do with an ordinance that, with an ordinance that the stores are enforcing? Well, here's the. Here's I think the, the government needs to work for the people. Yeah, here's not the. The government needs to. Here's the answer to the. Here's the answer to the question, and and this is gonna. We're never gonna agree on this, right? But, but the answer is that, in the absence of, of, cronyism, in the absence of, favors, in the absence of, government, uh, business and government blurring the line between regulation and business. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no fixing this. So so the question is, who do you want to be in charge? The business who the businesses who are ultimately responsible to the market, or the government who is ultimately responsible to who? The, the unions and democracy. unions and big businesses, big businesses. Democrat money and that's where. And, and my, the average person is not smart enough to act in a market force. There are people who will never want their bread and circus to end. I mean, you can see that That's with true. even Apple products. They release That's the true. same phone every year. It's, it's, it's far overpriced for their hardware. And as long as they have an endless flow of immigration from, you know, third world countries they're bringing here. I mean, the da Amazon, when you look at their, you know, their emails, they came to the conclusion that a non-homogenous society is less likely to unionize. And to bust unions... I mean, they have, you know, the, the leaked emails. I mean, it was Jay Carney and, you know, used to be the press secretary, you know, now working with Amazon, all that. They came to the conclusion that if you create basically essentially more multiculturalism within each Amazon branch, they will not unionize. And that's being done for corporate interests at a national scale. And these people that they're bringing in, and many of them, will do nothing but consume products. They will print money to give them government bucks that will then matriculate back into the economy by buying products they don't need for prices that are far too high, and it, it prohibits the market from, from operating effectively because the market only works assuming that everybody acts rationally. All right. that that might be you, you, you said a very interesting thing, prevents the market from acting rationally. Now, what prevents the market from acting rationally? Non-rational people. Exactly. No, the government prevents the market from acting rationally. Well, it depends how you... It At every level, the government might be global, might be county, but... Hold on, hold on. The, the, hold on. So th the problem is that your definition of, of what's rational and the, you know, whatever, whatever mental image you have of a sheep who just follows along with this stuff that Amazon does, uh, the definitions of rational are different. And the, the fundamental problem is that it seems like you would prefer other people to um, 
be taken care of in some way that as if they're not able to make their own decisions and the say that the, the lockdown has, has proven that point correct there's lots of people who, who are 18 year old kids and i see it all the time here wearing latex gloves and a mask in a car by themselves no oh, i know yeah no i know no you're absolutely right about that the 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 general population is perfectly willing uh to uh submit themselves to slavery for a little security. So, but so it's, it's they're either sla- currently they're slaves to whoever has the most money, whatever corporation can. And there, uh, there's monopolistic control at this point of numerous you know industries. You know, even you look at something like like Parler, uh, where where you know they create you know a platform, but it's an echo chamber because the only people using it, so it really has you know no bite in the political sense. So to me, it feels like certainly a lot of the people I know that ascribe to libertarian philosophies have kind of drifted from them because. They're seeing that in the end, the government wasn't who oppressed them. It was the companies that were essentially, I mean, if you have companies that can lobby government officials, you know, to do whatever they want, that's, you know, they, they cheated it fair and square. So, yeah, but so, problem, let me, so let me ask you a question. The problem is the lobbying, well, not the company. Well, yeah. well, let me ask you a question. Who, who, who would you prefer to buy your phone from, Apple or the United States government? Uh, I probably want to buy... I'd, re- I'd probably, re- if, if the phone was of quality from the government, I would have no problem buying a government phone. I buy a phone once, about once every eight years when it finally breaks to the point where I can't buy another one. I try to avoid giving money to these people as much as possible. See, that's where the... People like having a new phone every now and then. Yeah, so, I mean, people like... To spend their money, however, the people phone like new phones. People are willing to let Apple follow them around if they've got an iPhone right, 11. Right. And, that, and, and that's what I meant by we're never going to... You know, uh, it's... Just, well, they're leading them around. Apple is leading them around. And what I'm saying here is that there are people... You know, IQ is on a bell curve. There are people at the very top who are very smart and very wealthy that are leading the majority of the population down a very bad path. And, you know, productivity has gone up. Wages have not. And, I, you know, I've, I've read, you know, all the libertarian economics, I've read basic economics, you know, all the Thomas Sowell books and all that. Yeah. And really, I don't think there's a satisfactory explanation for the, you know, you know 68% of the people are within one standard deviation of average. And I don't think that there should be a world where 68% of the people are led around by a nefarious top, you know, third deviation at the top. And, uh, you know, I think that... But we're talking, well, we're talking about human nature, and that's, yeah. that's how it's always going to be. Oh, and well, where, where do you want that top to be? Do you want it to be in the government that's able to issue a mandate that closes down every non-essential business in a city, therefore further bolstering Amazon and Walmart. Because Walmart and Home Depot and, and, and Amazon That's, did not close. But no. every mom and pop, every... Well, what, I, but what I'm saying, though, is that that's a product of those companies being so influential. Amazon, Facebook, those companies should have been nationalized by the Ooh. group with the guns, meaning the government. And they should, that's, this whole situation should have been stopped a long time ago. I'm not. Well, yeah, well, well, all right, let me ask you. All right, so let's just cut through the bullshit. How would you like for things to be? I would like. I would immediately nationalize uh, every tech company, and uh, I would. I would start. I would start there and see how. I mean, first of all, I think public debate and discussion is is uh, you know a great thing. But right now, that doesn't. That you can't even. You know, there's no real free speech if you can't speak on the internet nowadays. If the, if the you know, Bill of Rights was rewritten now. That I, I would like to. Th- I think that that would include the internet, and I think that the internet should be treated as a utility. People should be free to argue their positions on the internet without being banned. Uh, I think that there should be. I think doxing should be a a crime that should be enforceable on on some level to be able to, you know, even prove dam- without having to prove, you know, direct financial damage. Even just in the, the act of doxing, put the person in some level of psychological risk. I think that that would so, be. I, I think that would be a good start. So, in other words, you want to double the size of the government, even from where it is now. Well, yeah. what I'm saying. Well, I, you know, I, the only way I could, uh, the only response I have to that is that I disagree. Yeah, I mean, I used to, I used to yeah. have as a younger man, I used to have similar thoughts. Not as, not as, uh, I guess, well developed as yours, but. Um, look, man. At the end of the day, it's it's where do you want the monopoly on violence to be, and if and if the type of phone that you can buy is backed up by the monopoly, the government monopoly on violence, I think that's a problem. You know, because you can still whether whether you are smart or not or whatever, you can still choose whether you want to buy a, an Android phone or an iPhone, um, and and 
at the most fundamental level, those companies are competing for your attention. Um, so it, 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 if everybody's buying a government phone, what is that government phone going to look like? You know, it's just, it's, it, it comes down to just... That's not the be all end all. I'm not advocating for the government to make the... I'm not, I'm not saying to remove the market. I'm not, I'm not advocating for... What I'm saying is that companies should be allowed to operate, but if they get out of line and do things that are in, against the interest of the public good, someone has to go in and bust them. We busted the yes. truck at the turn of the 20th century, and I think the country is in a much better position for that. Uh, you know, we, we have problems. I mean, I, I've seen that, you know, the argument that, you know, some, sometimes the tech goes obsolete. You know, like the, I believe it was the Nikon right. cameras, you know, at one point were the best, and they didn't evolve with the digital cameras, and they went out of business. But I think we've reached a point where these companies are so, uh, they have a stranglehold on things. It, you, can, you know, it's to the point now where if someone, you know, rejects BLM and the message, you know, and I walk around here and I'm, you know, I'm well aware, to, you know, 88% of the people in, in the city of Chicago vote for Hillary Clinton. You know, and, uh, you know, when you walk down these streets, they have these signs in the window. You know, we, you know, we support Black Lives Matter. We support trans rights. We support all this. And that happened uh, much through the propaganda machine of private capital that was essentially buying a stake in the way that the government's run. And they brainwashed mass amounts of people like, Yuri, you know, you have the Yuri Bezmenov clip, you know, that everyone talks about, you know, the demoralization. I mean, there are people now who are 15-year-old kids that must weigh about 300 pounds and have never touched a weight in their life. Every product they eat is, is a branded. All right, all right, I, I get it. All right, here's, here's the situation. All right, here's the situation. You're not going to get an argument from us that social media uh, is violating uh, at least the spirit of antitrust. All right, you're not going to get an argument from, from us about that whatsoever. Uh, the DMC, listen to me, the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, specifically prohibits, uh, specifically establishes a distinction between a publisher and a, and a, a, a format like Facebook and Twitter is supposed to be. If, if Twitter and Facebook curate their content, then they become publishers. But no one has sued Facebook and Twitter on the basis of the DMCA, and they need to be sued on that basis because they're violating it every day. You're not going to get an argument from us on that, okay? But by the same token, if you call for a vast expansion of the power of of government at all levels, which you seem to be advocating, then you are ignoring the fact that everything the government does is is essentially wrong, or at least inefficient. There's not, once again, there's not one single solitary thing that any government at any level has done since this whole thing took place. I'm saying the government has, I'm not... The government yeah. is not acting correctly. What I'm saying is they need to intervene. When the riots kicked off in Minneapolis, you know, anyone who had a brain, you know, and had ever seen this before and knew exactly what was going to happen, it was going to get worse. It was going to spread. They should have sent in twenty thousand military with no, they should and they should have. Cleaned That's, absolute the first minute. That's, That's absolute bullshit. That's absolute bullshit. That's absolute bullshit. Absolute, <laughs> absolute bullshit. Dollars in property there. <clears throat> absolute yeah. bullshit. That's probably true, but you destroy the country. Not that it's you not know, being it's, destroyed. Uh, now, the country's but, being but, destroyed, but, but you can't okay. look. You can't involve federal yeah. troops in a local law enforcement situation, especially in Minneapolis. So, thanks for your call. Okay, now See, Minneapolis yeah. voted for this. Okay, Portland voted for this. Seattle voted for this. Austin voted for this. Why would the government, the federal government, intervene in a situation, especially in the face of the Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution? Just because it offends you and me and Nick and Rusty and maybe even Bree. You know, why should we have any say whatsoever in Portland burning itself to the fucking ground. Yeah. It's not the purview of the federal government. Every one of them is, 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 they knew what they were voting for, or at least they know now what they were voting for, and you're absolutely right, we could have sent 25,000 federal troops into Minneapolis 
and taken care of that whole thing. But when you do that, you don't have the United States of America anymore. Right. And I think that Minneapolis needs to learn from their experience. And I, I, How old do you think that, it's, that dude was? He's 20, 22, 23. I had, you, know. you know, I mean, I understand. You know, I understand. I, I was the same way back then. You understand but it's just, where he's coming from. Sure. I think in 10 years he calls back. He's a goddamn hardcore libertarian. Yeah, I believe. He's, he's not a stupid kid. Yep. He's not a stupid kid, but he understands. He, he wants things to be a certain way, right. and he's willing to do anything he can to get him that way, and that is wrong. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a big problem. All right. Put military boots down in cities to quell things. No, nah, you, 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 you don't have the United people States of America anymore. A lot of people are going to die at that. <clears throat> point. You get an 18 year old with an assault rifle, and then he's staring at a bunch of uh, rioters. And they start walking towards him. He's liable to he's liable to do the right thing and murder a bunch of them. <laughs> you know, and, and, and yeah, yeah. If you want to quell a riot, there's 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 only a couple of ways to do that. All right, and all of them involve dead people. But Minneapolis has decided they don't want to kill rioters. All right, Texas has not decided that. All right. If Minneapolis doesn't want to kill rioters, then guess what you get more of? You know, and this is this is just the way shit is. All right. This is a this is a rough time in the United States right now. This is the probably the worst time in our history for the past 150 years. And uh, there, there are ways to handle it. You could bring the federal government in. You certainly could bring the federal government in. But do you want to do that? Because what you get on the other side yeah. is not what you wanted. I promise you that's and, not and what you want. They'll wanted. piss off everybody that way. And not only yes. that, they'll piss the, off the next step to that is, okay, well, now we got to keep the uh, military here to make sure it doesn't happen again. That's right. And, you know, well, yeah, that's uh, you know and, and back to my original point, there's not one single action the federal government has taken, the local government, state governments, county government, not one single thing have they done that's made the slightest bit of sense. This was the flu. The thing that and, he's missing, the, the, thing, the understanding that he's missing and, out on is that any time the government does anything, it never rolls <coughs> back. Nope. It never rolls back. It only There's never back. any accountability. It, it always gets bigger. You know, Andrew Cuomo single-handedly murdered, you know, 8,000 people in the state of New York with his ridiculous ideas about yep. how we're going to deal with people sure. with COVID-19. And he'll be reelected. Yep. You just watch. Yep. He'll be reelected. We've got a, if that's what you want, vote for it. Yep. Please. We wanted, we wanted security in 2001. We got the TSA. We got That's right. We got government we got W thought the TSA was got, a good idea. Not only that. We not only that, we've got all of our information being collected all the time. That Patriot Act Patriot fallout. Act. Oh yeah. Every bit of that because the federal government acted. Name something they've done that made the slightest bit of sense in the grand scheme of things. It makes sense from individual agenda perspectives that we're not privy to, but in terms of a logical response to what happened at 9-11, does the TSA make the slightest bit of sense? Obviously not. Yet it happened not anyway. Not security is the goal. <laughs> no. If security is the goal, the Transportation Security Administration is not what you want to fulfill that goal because they can't. Okay. So let's, let's wrap it up. I'm, I'm almost out of battery, and uh, that you, was you want one more or what? If if I don't run out of battery, let's see what happens. All right. All right. One let's more. Try it. One more. Running out of battery. Hello. 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 Talk. Hello. My name is Matt. Uh, I'm in South Carolina. I do have a quick question about conditioning training. I know you're pretty anti that, but uh, I'm not. I'm not anti conditioning. I am anti letting it interfere with strength training. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough, but right. uh, I, I still need to do that, and I just kind of wanted your, your take on 
when I should be programming that as long why do you as need well to do as that? doing strength training. Why, why do you, you need, need to do that? Because uh, I'm in the military and I have to be able to run certain distances. Yeah, we, we've dealt with this so many times. Uh, how many times a year are you tested? <laughs> right, how many? You got two tests a year, right? Yes, sir. You know when the test dates are? Yes, yes, I do. All right, then what you do is uh, 14 days before the test, you run the prescribed distance. Ten days before the test, you do it again. Five days before the test, you do it again, and then you take the test. And then you stop running and go back to training. That's how you do it. Conditioning is a very short-term effect. It's acquired quickly, and it is lost quickly. So if we know that it comes on fast, it's acquirable in a short period of time, then we don't spend a bunch of time doing it because it directly interferes with our strength adaptation. Strength comes on slowly. It can be built for years. Conditioning comes on very quickly. That's why two-a-days work in high school football. Okay? So my advice to you is to find out your test days, count back, do three runs in preparation for the test, take the test, and forget it ever happened until it's next time to do that again. Would you say that in those 14 days that I should still be doing strength training or in that specific scenario? Uh, just like- cut, cut about half of your strength training out. All right. Cool. Thanks for the call, man. All right. Bye. Now, wasn't that fun? <laughs> I had fun. Wasn't that fun? I had fun. I had fun with the Chicago kid. That was a good good conversation. Yeah, it was. He I was thought that up. was productive. He was fired up. Fired <laughs> up. I, Look, everybody's it, fired up. It's possible to have a rational discussion, <clears throat> even though you know some of the ideas are silly, but I think it's possible to have a rational discussion with somebody yeah. like that kid. Sure, and it's necessary to have a rational discussion because if we don't have a rational discussion with him, who's going to? Right. Yep. You know? The, the, hit the professors at school? Yep. You know, they all need to be dragged out and beaten to death with two-pound mauls, you know. <laughs> and little chunks of bone flying all over the sidewalk. That's what needs to happen to his professor. Mauls. Yes. <laughs> Shit. Just a little short hammer, you know, short-handled sledgehammer, you know. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. That would take a That's, really long time. That would that would, a long time. Nah, not if it's done correctly. <laughs> Not if it's done correctly. Well, anyway, just start, that's, you know, our revenge porn for the day. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on Starting Strength Radio. Next time, we'll probably do this Q&A thing once a month. Seems to be working well. You seem to enjoy it. Me and Nick seem to enjoy it. Rusty enjoys it. Bree, eh, you know. Disappeared. Bree left. So She fired herself. She fired herself. <laughs> she, re- she took herself out of the equation. Well, it's easier than having to fire her. Yeah. She quit. Yeah. Excellent. See ya. Okay. 